thank you very much for that very kind introduction. I am extremely thankful and thrilled to be back here on the main stage, so thank you very much. Um, you'll have to forgive me if I repeat myself a bit from yesterday, but I find it really important to underline, you know, the doom of the world and how thankful we should be that we have our methane eaters. So, methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. It retains heat 80 times more than carbon dioxide on a 20-year timescale. And so the International Panel for Climate Change has called for massive reductions in methane emissions if we want to keep global warming below the critical 1.5 degrees. And this isn't just magically going to happen. So we really praise our luck on these methane-eating bacteria. They're going to help us, you know, make the world not go under. So thank you. <laughs> Um, they're also quite interesting from a biotechnological perspective. So they produce compounds that can be used for bioplastics, biofuels, or single-cell protein. Most of these methane eaters survive on an elevated concentration of methane. However, some of them can actually also oxidize atmospheric methane. But these guys are notoriously hard to isolate, there's only been one single instance, and so, of course, we need to know these guys much better. Within our project, we are trying to identify methane eaters across 10,000 soil and sediment samples taken throughout all of Denmark. And we are doing so by a gene-centric approach, so we are looking for the functional genes that encode methane monooxygenase. And throughout my presentation, I'll just stick with one of the Weasleys, so we'll focus on the PMOA. And we're using a tool called GraphDem. So we're translating all DNA sequences into corresponding protein sequences. And then we're using statistical models, so HMM models, to infer whether a given sequence could be a potential methane monooxygenase. And we're then placing it into a predefined protein phylogenetic tree. And we've done so for 10,000 samples. And this is really nice, so we can say a lot about the diversity and distribution of these methane eaters. But the resolution of this depends quite heavily on the quality of the databases. And the quality is quite poor, so complete groups are missing. A lot of the sequences originate from amplicon sequencing, so we do not have the entire genome, we do not have a corresponding 16S sequence. And these databases are also highly biased against um, so the, the low affinity oxidizers. So we really need more representation of the atmospheric methane oxidizers. And so we set out to fix this by selecting samples that have a particularly interesting microbial profile. And we target these samples with long read sequencing. So we're really aiming to get high quality reconstructed bacterial genomes by using nanopore long read sequencing. But we can really only do so for the very most abundant species within our samples. We, of course, want to utilize all of the data that we're generating with the Promethion. And so we're doing so by looking directly at unassembled raw reads, so reads that have not even been assembled into context. However, as I mentioned, we need to translate our sequences into protein space in order to use them for downstream analysis. And when we do so, we end up with sequences that is they are nowhere near the full length of the PMOA sequence. So this is not really what we are aiming for. However, due to the low error rate on the newest R10 chemistry, we can actually fix by far the majority of these errors by using diamond in frame shift error alignment mode. So this allows us to transfer these indels into protein space so that we can actually ex extract one coherent sequence. And then we can try to infer the phylogeny of this sequence. So what I'm showing here is a protein phylogenetic tree. And in purple, we have all of the reads that we've been able to correct, so of the raw, unassembled reads. And we can see that they cluster very nicely around a contig. So nothing too surprising here. We could also identify this within our assembly. However, things get quite interesting when we look at this other group of methane eaters. So we can see that there is no contig. We could not identify this group by looking at the assembly. We could not identify this group in the shallow emitted genomes either. And so this is quite a game changer, actually. This is a novel group of methane eaters that we are only able to identify if we look directly at the raw and unassembled reads. And I think this really highlights that 
we, if we are able to, to take a deep dive into this data, we can actually identify something that would otherwise not have been possible. And so we're really trying to populate the methanotroph tree of life with high quality uh, metagenome assembled genomes. And so we're really doing two things. We're replacing current genomes that are very fragmented and does not contain 16S, so short read based genomes with genomes of much higher quality. But we're also finding completely novel methane eaters. So this is a circular genome from uh, an atmospheric methane oxidizer. And I think, yeah, so from, from only 14 samples, we've been able to populate or increase the methanotroph tree of life with 13%. I think this really underlines that it does really work well to target our sequencing efforts by looking at the shallow metagenomes. I also think this underlines how very poor current databases are, that we can do such a big improvement from only 14 samples. Now, once we have these high-quality genomes, we're then able to do predictive metabolic models so we can look at not only the capability or predict the capability of them to oxidize methane, but also if they have all of the necessary downstream pathways to actually handle this methane. And this is really quite essential because the enzymes that we're looking for share quite high sequence similarity to enzymes that have completely different functions. Um, and so it's really, really important that we can make educated guesses based on the entire metabolism and not only on a single sequence. And so once we have sort of gone through their metabolic capabilities, we're then able to, to add these sequences into our search tools. Um, and then it's really handy to have 10,000 samples nearby. So whenever we find something novel, we can actually go through our 10,000 shallow metagenomes and try to describe their habitat preferences. Where are they found in Denmark? Are they prevalent or are they not? Um, and of course, the end game of all of this is to make a giant encyclopedia of fantastic methanotrophs and where to find them. And I would really like to thank you, the entire Microflora Danica team. I am really, really honored to be working with such amazing people and on such amazing data. I feel like I'm the luckiest master student in the world, having access to all of this amazing data. Um, and I would also really like to thank all of you for the opportunity to present here. Uh, thank you very much.